I'm Emma, a 40-year-old with a life story that's anything but straightforward. Let's start from the very beginning, shall we? It's just me and my son, Lucas, a spirited 10-year-old who looks exactly like his father, his dad. Well, that's a chapter of my life I kept under wraps until it unfolded in ways I never expected. My husband, Ethan, was a man with a good heart and a troubled past. We knew each other for what felt like a lifetime. Friends turned lovers. A classic tale. But our story had its share of thorns. Ethan was once married, a union that fizzled out without the joy of children echoing through their home. Then life threw us together. It felt right. It felt destined. And soon we tied the knot in a small ceremony with just close friends and a few relatives. Ethan's family. Well, they were a mixed bag. Most were welcoming. But there was one, his younger sister, Sophie. Life after the wedding was like walking on eggshells, especially when it came to Sophie. She was a regular at our house, dropping by unannounced, always with that same sweet-as-pie smile when Ethan was around. But her eyes told another story, darting around, taking everything in with a cold calculation. One evening, not long after we got married, she came over for dinner. Ethan was in high spirits, laughing and chatting about this and that. Sophie was all compliments, her voice dripping with honey. Emma, this casserole is divine. You must give me the recipe, she said, her eyes fixed on me. But it felt like she was looking for something, anything, to criticize. Sure, Sophie, it's really simple, I replied, forcing a smile. Ethan left the room to take a call, and the air shifted. Sophie leaned in, her voice low and menacing. Simple, huh? Just like you. You think you've got everyone fooled, but not me. I know what you're after. I clenched my fists under the table, trying to keep my cool. I'm not sure what you mean, Sophie. Ethan and I love each other. That's all there is to it. She scoffed, rolling her eyes. Love? Please. You saw an opportunity and you took it. But watch your back, Emma. I'm on to you. The conversation was always the same, a never-ending loop of accusations and veiled threats. I wanted to tell Ethan to expose her for what she really was, but I knew it would break his heart. He loved his sister despite everything. So, I kept silent, hoping against hope that she'd eventually see the truth. Lucas, bless his heart, tried to stay out of it, but kids are perceptive. Mom, why doesn't Aunt Sophie like us? He'd ask. I'd hug him tight, whispering reassurances. She's just different, honey. But it's okay. We have each other, and that's all that matters. But it wasn't okay. Every visit, every snide remark chipped away at me. I felt like I was living in a house with two faces, the happy home we showed the world and the tense, guarded reality whenever Sophie was around. One day, things came to a head. Sophie had been particularly venomous going on about how I was ruining her brother's life and how I'd never be a real part of their family. I'd had enough. Look, Sophie, I don't know what your problem is, but this is my home too. I'm your brother's wife, whether you like it or not. So cut the crap and either treat us with some respect or don't come back. Her eyes narrowed, a smirk playing on her lips. Oh, I'll be back, Emma. After all, someone has to keep an eye on you. Just remember, you're nothing here. You're just playing pretend, and I'm not buying it. After she left, I slumped against the door, feeling drained and defeated. It was like living with a ghost, a constant nagging presence that refused to leave us in peace. Sophie was a piece of work. To Ethan, she was sweetness personified, always complimenting my home and my cooking. But the moment his back was turned, the mask would drop, and so would my heart. Playing house, Emma, Sophie would sneer the minute we were alone, 
her eyes scanning the room like she was looking for dirt. You think you've snagged yourself a golden ticket with my brother, huh? I'd grit my teeth, forcing a smile. Sophie, I love Ethan. This isn't about money or comfort. It's about being a family. Family. She'd scoff, tossing her hair back. Please, you and that kid are just extra baggage she decided to pick up. But don't worry, I see right through you. Her words stung, but I kept my composure for the sake of peace, for the sake of the man I loved. Ethan was oblivious to this side of Sophie, or maybe he chose to be. He adored his sister despite her faults. And I, well, I tried for his sake. At gatherings, Sophie's dual nature was on full display. With Ethan in the room, she was all praises and smiles. But let him step out, and her words turned sharp, her glances scalding. I did my best to navigate these waters, keeping my distance and keeping my calm. Emma, why do you even bother with her? My best friend Claire would ask. She's nothing but trouble, Claire would say. I'd sigh, sipping my coffee. I know, Ratch, but she's Ethan's sister. What can I do? I just hope one day she'll come around. Deep down, I knew some people never change. Sophie was like a storm cloud on a clear day, always looming, always threatening to burst. Yet, I held on to hope, hoping that one day we find some common ground. As for Lucas, he was too young to understand the undercurrents, too innocent to see the disdain in Sophie's eyes. He just knew her as his aunt, the one who gave him stiff hugs and forced smiles. I wanted to protect him from her bitterness, shield him from the harsh realities of family politics. He deserved a childhood untouched by such adult resentments. So, there you have it. The stage was set, our lives intertwined in a web of love, secrets, and simmering tensions. Little did I know the threads of our past were about to unravel in ways none of us could foresee. But I couldn't let her win. I had to be strong for Ethan, for Lucas. I had to believe that someday, somehow, things would get better. That maybe, just maybe, Sophie would see that I was here for love, not for money or status. That we were a family, not just a convenient arrangement. So, I kept going, putting on a brave face and hoping for a day when Sophie's poisoned welcome would be nothing but a distant memory. It was a day like any other until the phone rang, shattering our little world into before and after. Ethan's gone, they said, and with three words, my heart was torn from my chest. I had to tell Lucas, my sweet ten-year-old boy who still believed the world was kind and fair. His reaction was immediate and devastating, a mixture of tears and disbelief. Why, Mom? Why did he have to go? He sobbed. And I had no answers. Just my own silent screams and aching emptiness. As the day of the funeral drew near, I was swallowed by arrangements and condolences, a never-ending stream of tasks and tears. Through it all, Sophie, Ethan's sister, was absent. Not a call, not a visit, as if her brother's death was a mere inconvenience. Her indifference was a cold slap amidst our grief. Then came the funeral, a solemn affair of black suits and quiet sobs. Lucas clomped to me, his small hand a lifeline in a sea of sorrow. That's when Sophie arrived, late. Her entrance was grandiose in a revealing black dress that whispered of expensive tastes and little regard for the occasion. Her face was calm, almost pleased, as she sauntered in, her presence more of a statement than a show of respect. She floated among the mourners, her demeanor unsettlingly light. Her absence in the preparations, now paired with her almost celebratory attire, felt like a betrayal, a mockery of Ethan's memory. I stood there, holding Lucas close, feeling the weight of grief and anger. How could she be so callous, so utterly detached? Her brother, her flesh and blood, lay before us, and she carried on as if attending a gala. It was more than disrespectful, it was cruel. But as the service continued, a quiet resolve settled over me. I needed to be strong for Lucas, for myself, for the love and life Ethan, and I shared. I whispered a silent prayer, not just for Ethan, but for myself. Give me strength, I implored, 
feeling the gentle touch of something greater than myself steadying my heart. Help me through this day, through this pain. Let me be the anchor for Lucas as we navigate these dark waters. As the final words were spoken and the mourners began to leave, I felt it, a subtle yet profound fortitude. The pain was still sharp and unyielding, but so was a newfound determination. We would move forward, carrying Ethan in our hearts, enduring the loss, the betrayal, and whatever else might come. Sophie's actions, her unsettling glee, would need to be addressed, but not now. Now was for mourning, for holding tight to the pieces of our shattered world. As we prepared to leave the church, I knew we weren't alone. In our hearts and memories, Ethan lived on. With that knowledge, I found the strength to take the first step into our new, uncertain future. As the priest wound down the service, Sophie pushed through the crowd, her face twisted into a smirk that didn't belong. I got something to say, she announced, her voice cutting through the murmured condolences like a knife. Everyone turned, a collective breath held. She scanned the crowd, her eyes finally landing on me and Lucas. Emma here, she's nothing but a gold digger. Always was. Let's shown to Ethan the first chance she got, didn't you? Sophie's words were like venom, each one spat out with malicious glee. The crowd murmured, some with shock, others with awkward nods. I felt Lucas's grip tighten, his body stiffen. Mom, he whispered, a quiver in his voice. I squeezed his hand, my own voice firm. Don't listen, Lucas. Sophie was on a roll now, her voice rising. And this boy here, he's no rightful heir. Ethan never adopted him. All that money, the house, it's mine by right. I'm Ethan's real family, his blood, and I'll be damned if I let these two take what's rightfully mine. I couldn't hold back the fire rising in me to meet her challenge. You've got some nerve, Sophie, standing here on this day, at your own brother's funeral, spouting this nonsense. Have you no shame? She laughed, a cold, harsh sound. Shame for what? Telling the truth. Nah, Emma, I'm just setting things straight. You and the boy better pack up. I'm taking back what's mine. The priest tried to intervene, his voice a calm in the storm. Please let's not do this here. This is a time for mourning and reflection. But Sophie brushed him off, her eyes locked on mine, full of challenge and malice. The crowd was uneasy now, shifting feet, lowered gazes, nobody wanting to be part of this debacle. Finally, with a huff, Sophie turned on her heel and strutted off, leaving a wake of silence behind her. I stood there shaking, not with fear but with a fierce, protective rage. Lucas was still beside me, his small hand a constant reminder of who I needed to be strong for. As people slowly started to disperse, a few brave souls came up, offering hushed words of support. Don't mind her, Emma. We know you. We know Ethan loved you and Lucas. I nodded, my throat tight with unched tears. Thanks, I managed, my voice barely a whisper. As the last of the mourners left, Lucas and I stood there, alone but together, facing the fresh grave that held so much of our lives. We'll be okay, Lucas, I said, more to myself than to him. No matter what she says, no matter what she does, we'll be okay. We walked away then, the weight of the day heavy on our shoulders but not crushing. Sophie's words, her threats, they were just that, words. And I'd be damned if I let her tear down what Ethan and I had built, what we'd promised to each other, and to our son. This fiasco, this cruel display, wouldn't define us. We were stronger than that, made of sterner stuff. As we left the cemetery, I knew one thing for sure. Sophie had picked the wrong woman to mess with. I was going to fight for Ethan, for Lucas, for us, and I wasn't going to lose. The days after Ethan's funeral were a heavy blend of silence and whispers. The house was filled with an echoing absence. Lucas shuffled around, his eyes hollow, pausing at things that reminded him of his dad. Mom, he'd say, holding up a model airplane they'd built together. Dad said we'd fly this in the park. Just him and me. I'd pull them close, my heart aching. I know, baby. We can still take it. Keep flying it for him.
One evening, as I was trying to piece together some semblance of dinner, there was a knock at the door. I opened it to find Claire, my closest friend, her face etched with concern. Emma, how are you holding up? She asked, stepping inside. I shrugged, the weight of the world on my shoulders. Somehow, it's tough, Ratch. Sophie is making it worse, threatening to take everything. Claire's face hardened. That woman's a piece of work. Don't you worry, we won't let her push you around. It was comforting having Claire there, a piece of normalcy in the chaos of grief. As we sat down, sipping lukewarm coffee, I let out everything. My fears, my anger, my sheer exhaustion. Lucas is lost, Ratch. He doesn't understand why his dad's gone or why his aunt is after us now. And I'm just, I'm just so tired. Claire reached over, squeezing my hand. You're strong, Emma, stronger than you know. And you've got people who care, who'll stand by you. Sophie won't get away with this. Her words bolstered me, a reminder that I wasn't alone. But as the days dragged on, the reality of Ethan's absence and Sophie's looming threat pressed down on us. I catch Lucas looking out the window, his little forehead furrowed in thought. Life had to go on, even when every part of me wanted to just stop and mourn. Bills needed paying, Lucas needed looking after, and amidst it all, Sophie's venomous words at the funeral haunted me. Her threats of taking everything loomed over us like a dark cloud. Then, out of nowhere, Sophie showed up like a storm. She barged in, slamming the door behind her, her eyes wild and her face twisted in rage. This is bull, she screamed, waving a crumpled copy of the will. Everything to Lucas? What about me, his sister? I get scraps. Her voice was like nails on a chalkboard, and I felt my blood boil. Lucas was in the next room, and I could see the fear in his eyes. I leaned against the door frame, my patience worn thin. Sophie, this is what Ethan wanted. It's all legal, all above board. Her laugh was harsh and bitter. Legal, my foot. He never adopted Lucas. He's got no claim, and neither do you. I let out a laugh, not of joy, but of sheer disbelief at the absurdity of it all. Oh, Sophie, you don't get it, do you? Lucas didn't need adopting. He's Athan's son, our son, born before you even knew what was happening. Her face went white, her eyes widening. What? No, that's impossible. You're lying. I walked over to the cabinet, pulling out a drawer stuffed with documents I never thought I'd need to show. Here, I said, slamming the papers down on the table. Paternity tests, birth certificates. It's all there, black and white. Ethan's the father. Always has been. She picked up the papers, her hands trembling as she read. This, this can't be. But it was. As the reality sunk in, I saw something I never thought I would in Sophie, utter defeat. Her anger and hostility crumbled, leaving a shell of the woman who had tormented us for so long. Ethan loved Lucas, I said, my voice steady. He loved us. And you? You've been chasing shadows, trying to destroy what he cared for most. For a moment, Sophie was speechless, her mind racing to catch up. Then, with a scream of rage, she stormed out, slamming the door behind her. I collapsed into a chair, my heart racing but with a grim satisfaction. The truth was out, and Sophie's world had just come crashing down. Lucas peeked out from the other room, his eyes wide. Is she gone, Mom? I nodded, getting up to hug him. Yes, baby, she's gone, and she's not going to bother us anymore. He hugged me back, a small, trembling hug from a kid who'd seen too much. I wish Dad was here, he whispered. Me too, honey, me too. But he wasn't, and now it was just us against the world, against Sophie's greed and spite. But we were strong, and we were together. With the truth on our side, I knew we'd make it through. Whatever it took, we'd face it head on. Just me and my boy. Sophie's departure from our last confrontation was a scene I won't easily forget. She stumbled out, a chaotic mix of anger and despair, her threats and sobs trailing behind her. The door slamming shut felt like the end of an era, one filled with bitterness and conflict. 
As the days turned to weeks, whispers about Sophie started to reach me. The neighborhood grapevine was abuzz with her latest misfortunes. She was drowning in debt, the kind that swallows you whole. Turns out she'd been gambling on a big payday from Ethan's estate, and when that fell through, her whole house of cards started to collapse. One day, Claire stopped by with the latest gossip. You heard about Sophie? She asked as she settled onto the sofa. I nodded, weary. Bits and pieces. Sounds like she's in deep. Claire's eyes were wide with the thrill of the news. Deep? She's practically buried. Loans, debts, you name it. She bet everything on getting Ethan's money, and now she's paying for it, Claire said. I shook my head, a bitter taste in my mouth. She brought it on herself. I warned her, but she wouldn't listen. Yeah, well, now she's running scared, Claire continued. People are looking for her, and not the friendly kind. She's a ghost, hiding from everyone she owes. The thought of Sophie, once so haughty and cruel, now reduced to a fugitive, was a stark turnaround. Part of me felt vindicated, but another part, a part I wasn't proud of, felt a pang of pity. I sighed, rubbing my temples. What a mess. I can't say I'm surprised, but God, what a waste. Claire nodded, her expression sobering. Yeah, it's a bad business all around. Just goes to show, what goes around comes around. The conversation shifted. Life moved on, but the story of Sophie's descent stayed with me. It was a somber reminder how quickly life can unravel when greed and vengeance take the wheel. Lucas, ever sensitive to the undercurrents, asked one evening, Mom, what's going to happen to Aunt Sophie? I looked at him, his young face concerned and curious. I don't know, honey. She's made some bad choices, and now she has to face the consequences. As the days turned into weeks and then months, the chaos that Sophie brought into our lives began to fade, becoming more of a distant, if unpleasant, memory. Lucas was doing better at school, his smiles more frequent, and his laughter genuine. And me? I was finding my footing again, learning to navigate the world as just me and my son. One quiet evening, Lucas and I were sitting on the porch, watching the sun dip below the horizon. He was chatting about his day, the usual mix of school stories and little boy adventures. Mom, he said suddenly, his tone shifting to something more serious. Do you ever miss Dad? The question caught me off guard, a lump forming in my throat. Every day, honey. Every single day. He nodded, leaning against me. Me too. But I think we're doing okay, right? Just the two of us. I hugged him close, a smile breaking through the tears threatening to spill. Yeah, kiddo, we're doing more than okay. We're doing great, and it was true. Despite the grief and the trials, we were finding our way through stronger and more connected than ever. I looked at Lucas, this incredible little human who'd been through so much, and felt a surge of pride. Our conversation was interrupted by a knock at the door. It was Claire, her face beaming as she held up a couple of pizza boxes. Thought you guys might be hungry, she said, winking at Lucas. His face lit up all earlier seriousness forgotten at the prospect of pizza. Auntie Ratch, you're the best. We gathered around the table, a small makeshift family, laughing and sharing slices. It was these moments, simple and unassuming, that I cherished the most. They were a reminder of what we'd overcome and a promise of what was still to come. We sat in comfortable silence, the night wrapping around us like a blanket. I thought about the future, about all the possibilities and challenges it held. It was unknown, uncertain, but it was ours to shape. As I looked at the stars twinkling above, I made a silent vow to keep living, to keep loving, to never forget the past but not let it define us either. We had a whole world ahead of us, and I was ready to face it head on, with Lucas by my side. It felt right. It felt good. We were moving on, stepping into a new day with our heads held high and our hearts open. Whatever came next, we'd be ready for it. Together, 